Yeah. This is Recovery with Pastor Kent. And today is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. Sorry. 29, 27. Oh, no, it's the 30th. What am I talking about? Goodness gracious me. God does for us. Ongoing recovery is dependent on a relationship with a loving God who cares for us and who will do for us what we find impossible to do for others and ourselves. We often have we heard it said at meetings God does for us what we can't do for ourselves. At times we may let st st stuck in our recovery unable afraid or willing to make the decisions to the end of the relationship that just wasn't working. Maybe our job has become a source to much comfort or perhaps we find a thought of grace of God expect a change from our occurring in the teasingly the area we felt unable to alter. We sometimes allow ourselves to become stuck in a problem instead of moving forward toward the solution. At these times we often find that God does not for us what we can't do for ourselves. Perhaps our partner decides to end the relationship. We may get fired up or laid off or our sponsor tells us that he or she can no longer work with us, forcing us to look for a new one. Sometimes what occurs in our lives can be frightening, and change often seems. But we also hear that God never closes a door without opening another one. We are more for we move forward with faith. The strength of a higher power is never far from us. Our recovery is strengthened by those changes. I trust that God of my understanding will for me what I can't do for myself. I attest to you this is true. You know, I'll share with you one of the things that I couldn't let go and that was my hatred toward my abuser who raped me at the age of nine. You know, I hated that man. I wanted to see him gutted from his balls to his neck. And I wanted to be the one to watch his insides spill out all over the floor. Watch him 
bleed to death as he hung there on the meat hook. I had no compassion for him at all. I hated his guts. So when I started into recovery, I had to learn to forgive. I couldn't do it. I couldn't forgive my abuser. I could not forgive him for what he did to me. I thought it was unfair, uncool, and wrong to take my innocence away. So I lived a life of hate. For 45 years I lived that life. I hated him. I prayed every day for God to take that hatred away. And at age 45, that hatred was taken away. You know, I can love him today, and if I seen him in heaven, I would forgive him. My dad beat me and abused me as a child, used me as a physical whipping stick and whipping post. I took the abuse from my brothers time and time again because I did not want to see what they went through. And I did not want them to see how it felt or feel how it hurt. So I took that beating for them because I loved them, because I cared about them. You know? Before my father passed away, I righted that situation. I love my father now. My earthly father I'm talking about. I love him with all my heart. And I miss him on a constant basis. You know. Some of the most great times that I can remember is the times that we trekked together for the five years that we were together on the road. Absolutely adored it. You know, this is where God can take us. If we let go and let God. Let God Jesus, be on the driver's seat. Let God of your understanding, whatever you call him, Buddha, Muhammad, Abba, or not Abba, Allah, no, let him be the driver. Don't you be. The only faith that works for me is the Christian faith. And I stand behind that 100%. May God bless and keep you in all you do. Amen.